was Mark Henry or, I mean, we know that the WWF had scouts guys like Gerald Briscoe and Jim Ross, and I'm sure others, uh, they were always looking for that talent. And we know on the WCW side of things, we had guys like Terry Taylor and Kevin Sullivan, but we know that the WWE specifically were looking at amateur athletics and, and football like draws came from football. And we know that, you know, Mark Henry was an amateur wrestler, but he was a power lifter and, you know, in the conversation for the Olympics. And did you guys have anybody who really monitored those type things for talent for WCW? No, we didn't. And that's, <clears throat> that was a mistake looking back at it now. And there was a time when I felt like dealing with athletes who had a lot of previous athletic training and whatever their sport was, football, basketball, martial arts, whatever, it didn't matter. You had to untrain so many characteristics, physical characteristics and, and tendencies that it was easier to train somebody sometimes without much of an athletic background. A little bit was great. A little bit of an amateur wrestling background, great. A little bit of football, you know, great, because you learn timing, you learn footwork, you learn balance. All those things are important to wrestling. But I think I underestimated how important it can be to have elite athletes like Mark Henry was because their training, their discipline was at a different level than a casual athlete. It just wrestled in high school or maybe a little college or played a little college football here and there. Um, guys like, again, Mark Henry, Kurt Angle, that had elite athletic backgrounds, brought a lot more to the table than I probably gave them credit for at the time. And good on WWE, good on guys like Gerald Briscoe for looking for amateur wrestlers who, who were elite amateur wrestlers, not just somebody who made a team somewhere. I think it, it paid off big dividends and obviously look at Kurt Angle being probably the biggest example of that. We, uh, we're watching a show here with, uh, China, another performer gone way too soon. Do you think in hindsight, WCW would have benefited from having a talent positioned like China? I mean, certainly at different times, women had important roles, whether it was Sherry Martell or Medusa, but it doesn't feel like WCW ever got close to having a China like performer. Um, in hindsight, was that a missed opportunity or would you think that could have ever worked with Turner? Would they have ever allowed some of the things that WWE had China do to happen on their programming? Uh, you know, in fairness to China, <clears throat> I think what made China was the fact that she could get in there and work with anybody. She was an outstanding performer and a versatile one at that. Yes, she did a lot of things outside of the ring, you know, in ring action, so to speak, that was provocative and salacious and all that and helped build her character. But at the core, she had, she could get in there and work with anybody and, and do very, very well. She was a very physical, very, uh, adept professional wrestler, not to take anything away from Sherry or anything away from Medusa, but both of them were kind of like, sometimes they're eye candy. Sometimes they're managers. Sometimes they're athletic. Sometimes they're, you know, Medusa probably more than Sherry during Sherry's time with WCW, but neither one of them had the technical expertise of China of China. I mean, they're not even close. And I think with WCW, you know, what would we have done with her? You know, there just wasn't enough women for a woman's division. And Turner, I think to answer your question, at least partially, Turner would, especially at this point in time, I guarantee you at this point in time, Turner would not have been comfortable with any kind of regular woman versus man presentation. That I can, that I'm sure of. Let's do a few uh, questions while we're letting some of this develop here. Uh, Instagram, a wrestling historian over on Twitter wants to know during your leadership, what did you think was WCW's most controversial storyline? Thanks in advance. Wow. I, I'd have to think about that. You know, I don't think anything we did was really that controversial. Some of it was really creative. Some of it was silly. Uh, some of it was powerful. 
but I don't think I can think of anything that was really controversial. Well, we had Canyon get thrown off the cage in the same building where unfortunately Owen passed away the year prior Matt might qualify. We had the tease, or I guess that was the original idea, but we didn't see it play out on camera that Elizabeth was going to accuse Goldberg of rape. That word was never used and it was stalking instead. So thankfully that one didn't air. And the only other crazy one, you know, I mean, I guess there were some in the WCW era that were pretty risque. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the late Vince Russo WCW era, there was probably more than a few that I could think of. Yes. But, and I don't, you know, I'm, you I'm don't know under, the question was under my, my tenure. Yeah. I just yeah. don't think that we did. You know, I, I think one of the things that, that we did that was pretty controversial at the time, but just not in a sexual way, in a provocative way was, uh, when Ric Flair faked his heart attack in the ring. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That, 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 that got a lot of the wrong attention. Um, but that's about as close as I can come to something, thinking of something controversial that happened under my watch. Uh, Jack Styles wants to know what's Eric's thought on people like Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon insisting that this angle we're about to see was not a crucifixion and that instead it was a symbol. <sighs> um, I appreciate their position. Technically, I, you know, there's merit to what they're saying because that wasn't a cross. It, it was a symbol, much like Prince, the artist formerly known as Prince used for a while. It was a symbol, but I think there was enough connective tissue there and enough nuanced comparison to religion that it's, it, it's a great answer in court. You yes. know, it's, it's a great answer in court. That's the best way I can put it. Do I believe that they honestly believe that there wasn't strong religious intonations in this angle? I don't believe that. I wouldn't believe it if they said it to my face. I believe that they would have been doing what they should have done, which is defending their, their product and their company, but I don't think it's an honest answer. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad-free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad-free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like title chase, Eric fires back conversations with Conrad and the insiders. Plus new series like the book with David Crockett, Monday mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early. You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch alongs, Q and A's and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And Hey, when you do the first week is completely free Adfreeshows.com. 